If you're doing multi-camera editing in the Avid Media Composer, you need to get your workflow right. And I'm gonna help you with that. We're in Avid Media Composer, and this is what a multi-camera looks like in the Avid Media Composer. I have my sequence down here with my clips, and in the player window, it shows me all the angles that I can edit in my sequence. If you're doing everything in Avid, what you would do in the beginning is that you would link your files into the Avid Media Composer like these. And then before you do anything else, like transcoding, you would make sure to copy your file name or original file name over to tape ID or to cam roll. But I do recommend doing this in DaVinci Resolve, especially if you're going to be color grading in DaVinci Resolve, then you might as well do your whole proxy workflow in DaVinci Resolve. I made a whole video on how to do this. It'll be on the screen now and it will be in the description as well. Now, moving on. So I done my work. I got my transcoded files here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to set up my group. So what I do is I always leave the linked files in a bin until I need to relink them again. But like I said, if you're doing a DaVinci Avid workflow, you're going to do it in a different way. Just watch the video. I'm going to copy the files that I need to sync together into a bin. And I already named bin called sync work. And it's very important to be organized here. And you can see I already named my files one, two, three, and so on to make sure that the cameras are going to be in the order I would like to. So I want camera one to be the first image on the top here that I see and then camera two and three and so forth. I need to sort them. Then I'm going to hit command E. And now you can see the files are sorted. But my next issue is that I want this file to be the main music file because this recording is a studio recording of the music that they're playing as playback in the studio when they're recording it on camera. So all these cameras that will have sound on them, but it will be the sound from a camera mic, which doesn't sound very nice. So I want this one to be on top here because when you do a multi-camera sync, it will look at the lineup of the files in the bin and the file order in the bin will decide the file order of the multi-camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this file into another bin so I don't have it in here and I move it into my work bin. So I'm just going to move it back into my sync work and now it's on top. So now I'm ready to line up all the files that I want to sync in my multi-camera. What I could do if I knew all my time codes and all my audio was the same on all the files, I could just select them all and start doing my syncing. Find my group clips to sync. Multi-camera group is used for studio recording when you have the same time code. That's where it works best. Or if you have multiple files that you want to put into the same group. But today we're going to concentrate about group clips and this is probably the one you're going to be using the most. And here I could just say waveform and then it would sync it up by sound. Today I want to do in points. And the reason why I prefer doing in points instead of waveform syncing is because it's much quicker. If you've been working in Avid or in Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, you know this is a process that takes quite a while. It's not that bad in Resolve, but anyway, in Premiere and Avid, it does take a while. I'm going to say cancel because we want to do in points. So I'm going to make sure that the in points are set in all my clips before I start doing my syncing. Double click on my file. I'm going to make sure that my in points are right or that I have some in points and I do not have in points. So I'm just going to look at the waveform to see where it starts. And then I'm going to find the first beat. And to help me listen to the first beat or a clap, I'm going to turn on audio scrubbing. If you don't have the audio button in your project or on your keyboard as a shortcut, what you can do is you can say command or control three and it will open the window. 
I'm actually in the right area now, but let's say opened up in markers. What I can do is, and I can do this with all the things that I'm looking for, I can just start writing audio and it gives lots of audio options. But if I start writing scrub, it'll actually show me toggle digital audio scrub and I can just drag this down anywhere that I need it or put it on my keyboard. But in my case, I already have it and I turn it on. So I'm ready to go. If you don't have the waveforms in the window like I have here, what you can do is you can go down to your sequence and you can toggle what you're looking at and then remember to turn on waveforms. Then you can zoom into them and you can see where the beats start and you can make your endpoint or you can listen to it. That's the first beat that I can hear. So that's where I'm doing my endpoint. Remember, I'm doing it like this. You could also do it just before the beat, but whatever you decide, you need to do the same thing on all the clips. So in my case, when I hear the first sound of the beat, that's where I put my in point. I'm going to go to the next clip and I'm going to go down to the beginning. And if you're using the newest version of Midi Composer, then you can right click and then you can say waveforms, show waveforms. And here you can actually see where it starts and then you can listen to it. That's the first beat of the drum. We're going to keep going. All right, last one. So now we've got all our endpoints ready and I'm going to select all the clips that I want to sync. I'm going to say Command A and make sure that I'm in my bin. I'm going to say Command A or Control A to select them all. I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to find my group clips, hit it and I'm going to make sure it says endpoints and then I'm going to click Okay, it's already done my multi-camera edit. Double click on it and I'm going to turn off show waveforms so I can see my clip and scroll to it. And that's my group. And then I'm going to make sure to turn off audio scrubbing because it's quite annoying to listen to when you're editing. I'm just going to clear my monitor and I'm going to look at my sequence side and not my player side. Then I'm going to go into work. I usually do a bin that I call work where I'm actually doing my work in it. If I'm working with multiple editors on the same project, I would definitely make a folder with my name in it. And when I was a freelancer, I would always write my name and then my phone number. So in case someone needed to know where I saved the last version or someone needed to get me back in to do some extra work, they would have my number right on the bin. Anyway, so I'll go into my work bin and I'm going to take the beginning of this clip. And in this case where there's a clapboard, I usually bring in the clapboard as well, because then you have all the information about the scene. In this case, it's a music video, so I really do not need it. Make my endpoint, and, and I want it to end up in my work bin. Say so, okay. Now I've got my group clip, and as it is right now, it's just showing one clip. And if we just quickly go back to my sync work bin where I got my group clip. My group clip has a different icon than a regular clip that indicates that it's a multi-camera group or that it's a group clip. And now I'm jumping back to my sequence. To be able to see all the cameras at the same time, you can hit shift control M or command shift M. And now it shows all the nine camera angles that I have in this group clip and I can start editing. So now it starts off total and then maybe we want to see the drummer. There we go. All right, I done a few clips in my sequence and you can see that it's added a bunch of edits. 
and I can just keep going until I've gone through the whole scene or the whole music video in this case. You can see the green line is moving around to indicate the different cameras that I've chosen in the sequence. And I can always edit this if I wanted to. So in this case, if I feel like the timing is a bit off, what I could do is I could go in and trim it. I'll just turn off my audio track because we don't need to edit in that. Actually, what I wanted to do was to see her just throw the jacket and then go back to the drummer. So what I will do is, is I will then like that. Instead of the guitar player, I would choose the drummer. And now I change that picture to be the drummer. I still think I'm a little bit off, so I can just trim it. She throws the jacket there. there you go and if i need to see the camera name of different angles i got i can hit command or control and it'll show me the name of all the cameras and it's sorted in the right order as i want it but there's multiple ways of editing this i can also right click on the clip and then i can inside on a different angle instead of the drummer or like i did before go in and click on the picture that I want to change. And this is how you do a multi-camera editing. So when all this is done, I can go into my work pen and this is my sequence. Uh, instead of calling it untitled, I'll probably call it to begin with version one. And once it's done, I would definitely make a copy of it and call it final edit and then what you need to do before you relink the proxy files you could also do it uh, in online but depending on how quick your hard drives are or if you're working on a server I would definitely recommend doing a proxy workflow but if you like you could start off doing it in a high res and see how it runs if it runs fine keep going but if you're doing a proxy workflow or if you're delivering the final sequence to a color grader on a different software like Resolve, then you need to finish it and make this sequence ready to export. So what I do is once I've finished my edit, I'll right click on it. And what I need to do now is I need to commit to multi-camera edits. And what this will do is that it will remove the groups and it will just have one clip and the sequence. So I'm just going to do it and then I'll show you what happened. It'll give me a warning and I'm just going to say OK. And at least it's giving me a copy of the original sequence right away. So I don't have to make a copy of it. It's always a good practice to make sure you have a copy of the sequence you're editing in. So if I open this final edit, you can see here that I got my final edit open now in my sequence. And because it's removed all the groups, it'll only show one file at the time. So I'm just gonna turn off the multi-camera function by saying Shift Command M. So now we have the same edit, but we don't have the choice of right-clicking and changing the angle. And if we turn multi-camera edit on again, it will only show the one angle that's down there because we removed all the sync clips underneath. And this makes the sequence smaller in size because it's only linking back to one camera at the time. And then you export this final sequence to whatever editor you need. And it would probably be a AFF file or if you need to move it to a Pro Tools editor, then you would do it as a Pro Tools session. If you need a guide to see how you move your sequence to another editor, either DaVinci Resolve, you can watch this video, or if you need to make an export to Pro Tools, you can watch this video. Basically, this is how you set up your multi-camera editing. There will also be a link to the full workflow guide that you can follow on your own. 
So just look in the description and you'll find the link. So if you found this video helpful, please like it, subscribe and write a comment if there's something you missed or something you'd like me to explain to you. See you in the next video and let's be better editors together.